Hi, and welcome to Why Do Countries Exist, an episode on Swiss political parties. So today's episode was requested by the Eternal Learner and I think someone else on YouTube. If you want me to do another country's political parties, please either comment it down below, send me an email, send me a message on Patreon for my patrons, thanks to them by the way, or put a request in the feedback and request form in the description. I currently have requests to do Chilean parties, Slovenian parties, Kazakh parties, Indonesian parties, Argentine parties, Iranian parties, Mexican parties, Armenian parties, Iraqi parties, Singaporean parties, and many more. I also want to thank Thomas from the Center for answering some of my questions about the party and Swiss politics in general via an interview. I greatly appreciate it. Switzerland doesn't really have government and opposition parties. Well, Italy, for example, has very firmly a government headed by several right-wing parties and then an opposition made up of the Social Democrats, the Five Star Movement, and several other parties. Switzerland doesn't have this neat government versus opposition distinction. The closest to government parties you get are the four parties that have a presence in the seven-member federal council, which serves as the country's executive branch. In 1959, what is known as the magic formula was introduced, with a certain number of seats in the federal council given pretty much automatically to the four largest parties. Two seats for the liberals, two seats for the social democrats, two seats for the Christian democrats, and one seat for the agrarian right. In 2003, the system was slightly altered, with the Christian democrats losing a seat and the agrarian right gaining a seat. The magic formula ensures that the largest players in Swiss politics are represented in the executive, encouraging a consensus-driven political model. Many laws are also voted on by the Swiss population via referendum, which gives some decision-making power away from elected politicians and to the people. I'll talk about this later, but importantly, there have been growing challenges to the magic formula, as more people are voting for parties outside the four main blocks. So a change is likely going to happen within the next decade or so, since a growing number of the population isn't voting for these parties that are in the magic formula. Switzerland, despite the official name being the Swiss Confederation, is actually a federation, meaning the federal government and the regional or cantonal governments are roughly equally powerful. Switzerland's cantons are actually fairly strong and given a large degree of independence in comparison to other federal states. The cantons will vote on their own cantonal legislatures. The only exception is the canton of Abenzol Innerholt, which has essentially a large-scale meeting with the residents held in late April. There are four official languages in Switzerland. There is German, spoken by roughly 63% of the country, found in the center and northeast, French, spoken by around 23% in the west, Italian, spoken by 8%, mainly in the southern canton of Ticino, and to a lesser extent in the neighboring canton of Grisons, which is also where Romanish is partially spoken by 13% of the canton's population, or half a percent of the total Swiss population. The language divides are important, as while most parties do have a presence and strongholds across the linguistic divides, the major parties generally tend to do better in certain linguistic communities. Also important for the linguistic divides, is parties will have different names and acronyms for different linguistic communities. For example, the largest party in Switzerland is, in the French and Italian-speaking parts, the Democratic Union of the Center, or UDC, or in the German and Romanish-speaking parts, the Swiss People's Party, or the SVP for the Germans, or PPS for the Romanish. Saying all the different names and acronyms for each party would, quite frankly, eat up a lot of time and being annoying for me to struggle to renounce all the different names, so I'm just going to refer to the parties by the German acronyms, because German is the largest language in the country, and also closest to English, so hopefully I'm less likely to completely butcher it. The only exception is for parties that operate outside of German-speaking Switzerland. Switzerland recently, back in October, had an election for the legislature, the Federal Assembly. While the election did see some winners and losers, with some parties growing, other parties struggling, and two parties, the Swiss Party of Labour and Solidarity, two small socialist parties, lose their presence in the Federal Assembly, the big picture of Swiss parties and politics remains largely unchanged in many ways, since the Federal Council is not going to see any partisan differences. Just a new federal councillor, as Social Democrat Alan Bierset is stepping down. The larger lower chamber of the Federal Assembly is the National Council. The National Council is made up of 200 national councillors who are elected from 26 constituencies, each constituency being a canton. Cantons will send a different number of national councillors depending on the population of the cantons, with Zurich sending 36 while six cantons only send one. For cantons with just one seat, the election is first past the post, with whichever candidate getting the most votes being elected, while the remaining cantons will elect their national councillors via proportional representation. The national councillors will vote on rules and regulations, elect the federal council, manage the budget, and meet with foreign diplomats. The smaller upper chamber is the Council of States. The Council of States is made up of 46 senators. Each senator is elected from a canton via a two-round voting system. Most cantons will send two senators, but six cantons, known as half cantons, will only send one. The Council of States has all the same rules as the National Council, and a bill needs to pass through both chambers before it can be approved. 
The Council of States is like the Senate in America or Brazil, supposed to represent the cantons, while the National Council is like the House of Representatives in America or the Chamber of Deputies in Brazil, supposed to represent the people. Since the Council of States is smaller, it's more prestigious, and it seems like it might be less dominated by party bosses than compared to the National Council. So with all that background out of the way, let's start going over the parties, starting with the Swiss People's Party, or Schweizwerger Volkspartei, or SVP. The SVP can trace its origins to a political party known as the Party of Farmers, Traders, and Independents. It came to represent generally rural Protestant farmers who felt the liberals were putting the interests of towns and big businesses above their own. In 1971, it merged with a similar and smaller party known as the Democratic Party to form the SVP. In the 90s, the party underwent a radical transformation into a right-wing populist slash national conservative party, raging on both immigration and the EU. Since 2003, it has been the most voted for party in every election, and due to this success has been able to gain a second seat in the federal council. It today represents broadly the Swiss right, ranging from conservatives to far-right Swiss nationalists. While it does still do well in rural Protestant regions, it has expanded out to Catholic regions and does best generally among men, older voters, those without a university education, German speakers, and somewhat among the more working class Swiss. It's overall seen as a party for farmers, those who really hate immigration or the EU, or just people who are generally hostile towards political elites slash institutions. It currently has 62 national councillors, 6 senators, is present in every partisan cantonal legislature, and its two federal council members are Albert Rosti and Guy Parmelein. It's currently headed by Marco Chiesa, a senator from Ticino and former national councillor. The SVP's main goals today are the same as they were in the 90s, oppose immigration and the EU. It is hostile towards increased immigration, wanting to make asylum law stricter, opposes non-Swiss citizens using Swiss social services, wants to deport all illegal migrants, and wants to avoid Switzerland having over 10 million people in it. It opposes further integration with the EU, wanting to get rid of free movement with the EU, favors Swiss law over international law, and favors neutrality on the world stage, not wanting to align with any international blocs and opposing peacekeeping missions. It is also very socially conservative, spearheading the effort to ban the construction of minarets, supports tough on crime policies, supports traditional gender norms, opposes marital leave, opposes drug legalization, opposes same-sex marriage, and supports more car-friendly transportation. It also supports less government involvement in the economy, opposes expanding the welfare state, is hostile towards environmentally friendly policies, and wants to defend Switzerland's policies in World War II. While the SVP has been the largest party for two decades, it isn't in that position without controversy. The SVP is notorious for having a very aggressive and often racialized campaign style. For example, they in 2007 had posters that showed white sheep kicking up black sheep when calling for the deportation of criminal migrants, and then in 2017 had posters showing women in a burqa while calling for no naturalization. It also has several party members who have associated themselves with white identitarian movements. This has led to people to accuse the party of racism and xenophobia, which actually in November an SVP politician agreed with this, saying his party was, quote, perhaps xenophobic, but not racist, unquote. As the party has veered towards a more right and nationalistic direction, many of the party's more traditional moderate supporters have broken off and left the party. The biggest breakoff was in 2008, when the moderate wing, found primarily in Bern, broke off and formed the conservative Democratic Party. Its populist message of being the most anti-establishment party and standing up for the average Swiss is somewhat undercut by the fact that they have been the largest party and have many high-ranking politicians in office, so it's harder to argue that they are outsiders. And its transition to a populist party was largely financed and spearheaded by Christoph Bluhar, one of the richest men in Switzerland, someone who is certainly not an everyman. Despite all this, they still are the largest party, and it looks unlikely to change anytime soon so long as their aggressive campaign style and populist message continue to resonate with Swiss voters upset with the status quo. The SVP are in a parliamentary group with three other parties. There is the Federal Democratic Union, Eidgenöschte Demokratische Union, or EDU. The EDU was formed in the 70s from a breakoff of both the Evangelical People's Party, which we'll talk about later, and several Swiss nationalist parties. It is mostly backed by several different Protestant free churches, with the strongest support in southern Bern and northeast Switzerland. What does have branches all over Switzerland? It is largely irrelevant in south and central Switzerland, all areas with a large Catholic population. It ideologically is seen as representing a combination of right-wing populist and Protestant fundamentalist ideas, opposing gay marriage, supports traditional gender norms, is pro-life, pro-Israel, calls for absolute from all drugs and alcohol, opposes shops being open on Sundays, and generally is more supportive towards more environmental protections. It's a small party, usually getting at least some representation at the national level, but it's never managed to get over three members elected. It currently has two national councillors, and is present in seven cantonal legislatures. It is currently headed by Daniel Frischnecht, a psychologist. The next SVP allied party is the Geneva Citizens Movement, or in French, Mouvement Citoyen Genova, or MCG. 
The MCG is a party based in the canton of Geneva, and was formed in 2005 from ex-SVP and ex-liberal members upset by both the presence of cross-border commuters who lived in France but would travel to Geneva to work, and political elites. It describes itself on its website as neither right nor left, but generally I've seen it described as a right-wing populist party. It is hostile towards free movement between the EU and Switzerland, favors Swiss neutrality, and wants to reduce the bureaucracy. It, in 2013, reached its peak with almost 20% of the vote in the cantonal legislature, but suffered a defeat in 2018 with over half of the party voters abandoning it, and then in 2019, it losing its federal representation. This year did see a reversal of that, with it doing very well in federal elections, and apparently party members are debating about expanding to other parts of Switzerland, notably Zurich. It currently has two national councillors, one senator, and is president in the Grand Council of Geneva. It is currently headed by Francois Barchi, a member of the Grand Council. The last party in the SVP parliamentary group is is the Ticino League, or in Italian, Liga dei Ticinesi. The league is based in the canton of Ticino and tends to be described as Ticino's own Liga Nord, a major political party in Italy. Since my Italian political parties episode was a while ago, brief refresher on Liga Nord. Originally, it was a party that supported northern Italian independence, but has now shifted to right-wing populism. The League is a right-wing populist party, being hostile towards the EU, supports less taxes, supports more car-friendly policies, and is hostile towards increased immigration. It is very skeptical towards the federal Swiss government and calls for more autonomy, but doesn't call for a secession. It currently has one national councillor and is present in the Grand Council of Ticino. We spent a lot of time on the Swiss right, now let's move left, with the Social Democratic Party of Switzerland, or Social Democratische Partie de Schweiz, or SP. SP, out of all the major parties, is the oldest, having existed since 1888. It was originally, like many social democratic parties throughout Europe, more radical and Marxist, being closely tied with trade unions, the working class, socialist, suffragist, and pacifist. It began to grow quickly, becoming a major player in the country's politics, being the most voted for party in every election from 1928 to 1983. It has over the years moderated and lost its working class support somewhat, becoming more the party for bureaucrats and middle class professionals, but still tied to the trade union movement. It today represents social democrats, but also social liberals and some democratic socialists. It generally does better in French-speaking Switzerland, urban areas, and in some northern cantons like Basel-Stadt, along with doing better among women, generally those who make less, and those with a university education. It is seen as a party for trade unionists and those who want a pragmatic left. It currently has 41 national councillors, 9 senators, is present in every partisan cantonal legislature, and its two federal councillors are Elisabeth Baumschneider and B. Dianz. It is currently headed by Cedric Bermuth and Matthias Meyer, both national councillors. SP backs a lot of standard European social democrat policies. It wants more purchasing power for the average Swiss by fighting for lower rents, daycare, and health insurance premiums, supports making sure pensions, especially women's pensions, are paying well, and supports more government investment in solar power. It overall supports more government involvement in the economy, opposing privatization, wanting a strong welfare state, and wants progressive taxes, and wants to tax air travel. It is socially liberal, opposing racism or sexism in Switzerland, supports gay marriage, supports drug legalization, and opposes a strict immigration policy. In terms of foreign affairs, it is in favor of Switzerland joining the EU and aligning more with the West, although it opposes joining NATO. SP again, like a lot of standard European social democratic parties, are suffering with appearing too stuck in the past and appearing incompetent. As the years have gone by, especially since the early 20th century, it has moderated more and more and taken a more defensive role in social and economic matters, not really pushing for any progressive change, which has somewhat alienated more left-wing voters, while right-wing voters still see them as wasteful spenders and among SVP supporters as a part of the political establishment, considering its dominance for several decades in Switzerland. Since the 80s, it has begun to lose working-class support, as the party has become increasingly dominated by the middle-class and white-collar interest, which has led many to go to other parties, weakening its traditional support base. While the SP has, for decades, been the only real major left-wing force in the country, the rise of new green parties, which we will talk about later, has eaten into their vote share, as these new parties can argue they are a breath of fresh air and don't have the baggage of the SP label. Finally, while support for the EU has been growing in Switzerland, there is still a very large chunk of the Swiss population who deeply oppose aligning with any international bloc for fear that it will compromise Swiss neutrality. So Euroskeptics probably see the party, or at least sections of the party, as well as other Europhiles, as being controlled by Brussels or just abandoning one of Switzerland's core tenets. We move right with the center, or die Mitte. The center is actually on paper one of the youngest parties in Switzerland. 
It was founded in 2021 by a merger of the Christian Democratic Party and the Conservative Democratic Party. The Christian Democratic Party was a historically a very powerful party in Switzerland, representing the Catholic center-right, dominating the Catholic rural interior, and from 1919 until 1983, almost always getting over 20% of the vote. However, as I will talk about later, it started to struggle. The Conservative Democratic Party was, as mentioned earlier, formed as a moderate breakoff of the SVP, opposed to the more right-wing direction the party was taking. The 2019 election saw both parties lose votes and seats, with the Christian Democrats actually shrinking down to the fifth most voted for party, behind the Greens. This saw the Christian Democrats and Conservative Democrats merge together, hoping to unite together and form a new centrist bloc. While it has tried to present itself as a new secular party, it is still largely a Catholic-based party, getting the most support still in the Christian Democrat heartlands of the Catholic Central and Southern Switzerland, and generally does better in German, Italian, and Romanish-speaking parts of Switzerland. I've also been told a decent chunk of Christian Democrats slash center voters have familiar ties to the party in some way, so it does have a strong multi-generational element to it. It generally also does better among older voters, those without a university education, and our middle class. However, they also recently have been growing more among younger urban voters with its new identity. It's overall the party for both those that want a centrist bloc in Switzerland, opposing polarization, along with more moderate Catholic conservatives. It currently has 29 national councillors, 15 senators, being the largest party in the Council of States, is president in every partisan cantonal legislature, and its member in the federal council is Viola Amhart. It is currently headed by Gerhard Pistre, a national councillor. The center is shock of all shocks centrist. It favors a social market economy with a welfare state, wanting to strengthen consumer protection, wants to lower costs in the healthcare sector, and brags about putting flexible working hours on the political agenda. While the strong Catholic element has historically made the Christian Democrats more socially conservative, the center today is more socially liberal, being more friendly towards gay marriage, backs equal pay between men and women, wants to do more to promote biodiversity, and wants a net zero Switzerland by 2050. Although it does still want to increase the number of police in the country, wants to strengthen anti-terrorism laws, and supports deporting migrants convicted of a crime. It also wants to fight polarization in Switzerland, wanting to bring Switzerland together, favors closer cooperation with the EU, although it also opposes joining and is more hawkish on Russia and China. The Christian Democrats have for around 50 years been on a decline. As Switzerland has become more secular, the Christian Democrats lost more and more support. From 1979 to 2019, every election the party would lose votes election on election, the only exception being in 2007 when the party managed to win back just 0.1% of the vote. It was just seen as too old-fashioned, uninspiring, and unappealing to non-Catholics, and a part of the political establishment, which ultimately led many of its voters to jump ship and go towards the SVP or other parties, helping explain why the Christian Democrats lost a seat on the federal council. The merger with the conservative Democrats has mostly been positive, as over 80% of the party voted for the merger, but the fact that the Christian nature of the party was dropped, and it has merged to a more centrist position, could create tension if the center-right old guard isn't appeased. However, since the center did well last election, with it making some gains in the Council of States and an extra seat in the National Council, it seems the party unity is good. However, Thomas did tell me that since the party is new, people don't 100% know what they stand for and have lost some name recognition, so the party will have to work on that if it wants to return to its position it held in the mid-20th century. The center's parliamentary group also includes the Small Evangelical People's Party, or Evangelische Volkspartie des Schweiz, or EVP. The EVP was somewhat the mirror image of the Christian Democrats, being founded in the early 20th century, representing rural Protestant conservatives. It has, however, come to represent a type of Protestant Christian democratic tradition similar to the Christian Union in the Netherlands, being right on social issues, but almost center-left on economic issues. It is opposed to gay marriage and is pro-life, but supports a strong welfare state and supports more environmental protections. It mostly operates in German-speaking Switzerland, with more support in Bern and the North. It currently has two national councillors and is present in ten cantonal legislatures. It is currently headed by Lillian Studer, a former national councillor. The last of the blocs in the federal council are the Liberals, with the German name of the party being FDP de Liberalen. The Liberals have been active in Switzerland since the 19th century and dominated Swiss politics from 1848 till the First World War. The current Liberal Party was formed in 2009 as a merger of the Free Democratic Party, or FDP, which represented mainstream liberal thought and was the larger Liberal Party, and then the Liberal Party, or Die Liberalen, which represented a smaller, more principled, right-wing, almost quasi-libertarian Liberal Party. The Liberal bloc began to lose support at the end of the century, similar to the Christian Democrats, and hope merging together would beef up the Liberal bloc. While there is a socially liberal and a libertarian wing of the liberals, most are generally defined as center-right classical liberals. It tends to get the most support among French and Italian speakers and in urban areas. 
It also is more supported by the rich, men, older voters, and those with a university education. It's overall the party for the pragmatic right and those who want less government. It currently has 28 national councillors, 11 senators, is present in every partisan cantonal legislature, and its two federal councillors are Ignacio Cassis and Karen keller Suter. It is currently headed by Thierry Bukhart, a former national councillor and current senator from Argao. The liberals support less government in the economy and a centrist social policy. It wants less taxes, wants cantons to decide their own cantonal tax rates, wants to keep public debt low, opposes excessive government regulations, wants to reduce the bureaucracy, wants to give renewable energy projects tax incentives, and supports the free market. It generally calls for personal freedom and autonomy in personal affairs, for example, saying it supports, quote, a free choice of family model and childcare, unquote, although not fully specifying what they mean by that. It is like the center in favor of close relations with the EU, but opposes joining the organization. It also wants to make the agricultural sector more competitive, wants a stricter immigration policy while still encouraging skilled migrants to enter the country, wants to send more humanitarian aid to Ukraine, and has a more hawkish stance on China. The liberals in Switzerland are like the liberals throughout Europe, seen as being the party for the rich and wealthy and not really caring about those worse off. This also couples with the fact that they have been a leading party for decades in Switzerland, so they appear to represent the political establishment, which earns them the ill will of populist or those upset with the status quo. They have been seen, especially in the last two elections, as trying to piggyback off other parties' messaging, which just makes them appear like they don't have anything new to bring and are just power-hungry trying to chase trends to get votes. So like the Christian Democrats, they have struggled with keeping up their support base and have over the years lost more and more votes. While it hasn't been as traumatic as the Christian Democrats, it's still rough and for the first time dropped below 15% of the vote. The SVP, Social Democrats, the Center, and the Liberals control the federal council, but there are still two major political blocs in Switzerland. First, there is the Green Party of Switzerland, or Grün Schweiz. The Greens are an environmentalist party, tracing its origins to several different local environmentalist movements throughout Switzerland until it formed a national party in 1983. It was at first a small protest party, but in the 2000s it began to emerge as a serious contender in Swiss elections, by serving as a left-wing alternative to the Social Democrats and allying with other progressive movements, and in the 2019 election managed to get over 13% of the vote, beating out the Christian Democrats and becoming the fourth most voted-for party in the country. They did suffer this last election, but the Greens are likely to at some point get a seat in the federal council, so long as they continue to retain a large chunk of the Swiss electorate. They get the most support in French-speaking Switzerland and in urban cities. It also does better among women, young people, generally those who make less, those with a university education, and among the Swiss abroad. It's overall the party for people who really care about the environment and want a progressive alternative to the four main blocs. It currently has 23 national councillors, three senators, and is present in 19 partisan cantonal legislatures. It is currently headed by Beitel Sargletny, a former Zurich city councillor and current national councillor. The Greens support more environmental protections. It wants to replace fossil fuels with renewable energy by 2050, is hostile towards nuclear power, wants to reduce the amount of agricultural land in the country and the expansion of roads to better help protect Swiss wildlife and promote public transport. It's hostile towards GMOs, wants to ensure animals are treated humanely on farms, and wants to reduce the amount of urban sprawl. It is progressive socially, supporting greater LGBTQ rights, wants to make it easier for people with a disability to participate in society, wants to make the neutralization process easier, and wants to lower the voting age to 16. It supports more government investment in the economy, backing progressive taxes, wants to crack down on tax evasion, wants to promote more job training, and wants to do more to promote affordable housing. It also wants to reduce the power big businesses have in the Swiss agricultural sector, backs digitization, and supports closer relations with the EU. The Greens are a rising force in Switzerland, but they are still a pretty long way off from the other major parties. The image of the Greens as a unserious hippie party, only caring about the environment, tends to get thrown at other Green parties throughout Europe and is also thrown at the Greens in Switzerland. The main reason it seems the Greens lost support this election was because Swiss voters weren't as focused on the environment as they were in 2019, so the party struggled to get its message out. It also likely struggled because it isn't the only environmentalist party in Switzerland. As the last major bloc is also a Green party, And many other parties, particularly the Social Democrats and Liberals, do have further environmental protections on the political agenda, albeit different from the Green policies. But Swiss voters who do care about the environment have multiple options to choose from. The Greens in particular almost certainly fight with the Social Democrats for votes, since both are left-leaning parties whose support base is primarily found in urban French cities, often among college-educated women. Historically, there has been a decent amount of infighting over if the party should support or oppose Switzerland joining the EU, or if the party should be a progressive leftist party, or if it should stick solely to just environmental issues. Finally, despite it growing in size, it still doesn't have a seat in the federal council, reducing its influence and preventing it from gaining more experience or name recognition. The last bloc is, as stated earlier, an environmentalist party. 
the Green Liberal Party of Switzerland, or Grün Liberal Party de Schweiz, or GLP. The GLP was formed in 2007 as a merger of several moderate breakoffs of the Greens, protesting the more left-wing direction the party was taking, wanting to create a moderate but environmentalist bloc. It since 2011 has been the sixth largest political bloc, averaging around 6% of the vote the last four elections, with it finding its support base among mostly German speakers in large cantons, who tend to make more, have a university degree, and are slightly more likely to be a younger man. It currently has 10 national councillors, one senator, and is present in every partisan cantonal legislature, with the exception of Geneva, Uri, and Valles. It is currently headed by Jörg Grossen, a national councillor. The GLP is environmentally progressive and center-right economically. It opposes nuclear power, supports energy taxes, which seems to just be carbon taxes, wants to tax polluters, wants to do more to preserve green spaces in the cities, wants to do more to promote public transport, and wants Switzerland to be carbon neutral by 2040. While it does support taxing polluters more, it does want to reduce the amount of debt Switzerland is taking on, favors cantons setting their own tax rates, wants to simplify the tax code, calls for a strong but lean state, calls for personal responsibility, is more supportive of giving incentives to companies to behave a certain way rather than having regulations, and favors further digitization. It wants to legalize cannabis, backs LGBTQ rights, wants to simplify the naturalization policy, and is supportive of international law. It is also pro-EU, wanting further cooperation on climate policy and free trade, and wants to alter Switzerland's compulsory military service into compulsory service into the government. The GLP, while it is one of the six main political blocs in the country, is the smallest and therefore the weakest. It doesn't have a presence in the federal council like the Greens, but also doesn't quite have the organizational strength, popular support, or even media attention as the Greens. When the Green Bloc did well in 2019, all the news articles were reporting on the Green Party's gains, while the Green Liberals were almost treated as an afterthought. It's very likely the Greens, due to their growth and size, will be able to gain a seat in the federal council at some point in the near future, but that doesn't seem as likely as the GLP. They do have a fairly unique ideological position of being environmentally progressive, but economically liberal, but that might not be unique enough, as they likely have to compete with economically liberal voters with the FDP and maybe center, and then environmentally conscious voters with the Greens. Also, generally, environmentally conscious voters generally tend to be left-leaning and economically interventionist, so a right-leaning Green Party does somewhat have to fight this entrenched stereotype. All this doesn't make it impossible for the party to grow, but it will make it a challenge to break out of sixth place. So, those are the parties of Switzerland. In conclusion, there are six main political groups blocked into those in the Federal Council and those out of it. In the Federal Council, there is the Nationalist SVP, with its small Christian right and regional populist allies, the Social Democrats, the Center, a combination of centrist and Christian Democrats, and a small ally, the EVP, who represents Protestant Christian Democrats, and the Center-right Liberals. And then there are the two parties outside the Federal Council, the Greens, who are a stereotypical European Green Party, and the Green Liberal Party, who represent environmentalists who favor a center-right economic program. The Swiss politics and parties are unique in Europe for how they interact with each other and the fact that they are all forced to compromise in some ways. But uh, yeah, thanks for listening, thanks for watching. Thank you to my Patreons, especially my $5 patrons. And uh, yeah, after this I will do the history of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. I've already started research on that. Uh, that one will probably take a while, but I'm guessing it'll probably be out like early slash mid-January, sometime around there. Um, and then I will do Chilean political parties and then Slovenian political parties. So, uh, yeah, thanks again. If you want, you can email me at whydocountriesexist at gmail.com for your thoughts, comments, suggestions, or hate mail. Take care. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.